Hello friends, welcome in the lecture number 10.7. Uh, the title of this lecture is Semiconductor Laser. And this is the part of CS Beauty Physics. Learn with me. I Dr. Mohanil Verma from Department of Applied Physics, Sri Sankaracha Technical Campus, Pillai. So the outlines of this lecture, subjectives and the prerequisite, different type of lasers. Semiconductor laser in introduction, its basic components, its structure, working principle and limitations and applications of the semiconductor laser. And the uh, final part of this lecture is the summary uh, at the end. Objectives and prerequisite. The objectives of this lectures are to discuss the construction and working principle of semiconductor laser along with some important applications. So the prerequisite for this lecture. I expect from my student to have the knowledge of fundamental mechanism of laser and the band theory of materials, basic components of laser. So this is the detailed classification of laser. Lasers are classified into three main parts, the solid state laser, gaseous laser and semiconducting laser. Solid state lasers are further classified into two parts, ruby laser and uh, NDR laser and gaseous laser. These are that two main gaseous lasers. We have helium neon laser and carbon dioxide laser. That is measured here. And now uh, the semiconducting laser, gallium arsenide and gallium phosphorus arsenide laser. And uh, this is uh, the topic of uh, uh, this lecture where we will consider this gallium arsenide uh, first. So the introduction, the semiconductor laser is specially fabricated PN junction type devices. Both the PN and regions are highly doped and which emits coherent light when it is power forward biased. It is made from gallium arsenide. Here we are taking the example as gallium arsenide, but uh, it can also be made from uh, gallium phosphorus arsenide and other semiconducting materials which operated at low temperature and emits light in near IR region. Now the semiconductor laser are also made to emit light almost in the spectrum from ultraviolet to IR using different semiconducting materials. They are of very small size. The size is 0.1 mm long, very efficient, portable and operate at low power. They are widely used in optical fiber communication, in CD players and CD room drivers, optical readings and laser printing etc. So basic components. So these are the basic components of a general uh, laser system. So as far as the semiconducting laser is concerned, active centers are electrons. Generally electrons and holes are uh, the active, center, active centers which uh, take part in different transition. Active medium that semiconducting materials that gallium arsenide, gallium phosphorus arsenide. And here we are taking this gallium arsenide as an example. Pumping techniques, the direct conversion of electrical energy to laser. So generally one battery is used and uh, uh, when switch is kept on, laser starts. Optical cavity, obviously that fabric print resonator as usual. And uh, band theory of solid is used to explain the mechanism of uh, uh, this uh, semiconducting laser system. So the structure is very simple. One P-type and N-type semiconductors are staked over each other. And there is one micrometer level gap in between these two semiconductors. And uh, this is that metal contact at the upper and lower um, side of this. And uh, this is uh, some sort of uh, uh, PN junction diode or LED in LED light emitting diode. So the structure of light emitting diode is uh, similar to this. One main difference is uh, that uh, in the case of light emitting diode, these PNN type semiconductors are highly doped, doped semiconductors. But here, this P and uh, N type semiconductors are heavily doped, means that doping rate is much more than uh, that uh, um, ordinary light emitting diode. And then, next uh, main difference is the use of this fabric pyrite resonator. So, in uh, light emitting diode, there is no use of this uh, uh, fabric pyrite resonator. But here, in this case, uh, we use fabric pellet resonator. This is uh, one side which is partially polished 99% reflector and uh, the second end which is not uh, seen here that second is 100% uh, uh, reflective. So the fabric pellet resonator is one additional part here. So two main difference and uh, obviously output is different that uh, their light emitting diode emits light and here it, this gives a uh, uh, laser from the gap of these two semiconductors. So as far as uh, it's, uh, its dimension is concerned, this chip diode is about 500 mm long, the length is 500 mm and 100 mm wide 
and thickness and the top and bottom paste are metal contact to pass current and uh, uh, these are the fiber parameters so the structure is simple and uh, the uh, working is uh, it will work at uh, forward biasing so this p type semiconductor is connected with uh, uh, the positive um, pole of that battery and uh, that n type semiconductor is connected with a uh, negative side of uh, battery so led is also uh, worked at that forward biasing and uh, this is also worked at forward biasing even that uh, pn junction diode is also uh, uh, the device for that forward biasing now the working principle its working principle is explained on the basis of band theory of solid band theory of material so in the case of uh, band theory we know that uh, uh, materials are classified into two um, that bands are classified into two parts one is that conduction band that higher higher band and uh, the valence band that is the lower band so uh, in uh, our semiconductor physics we have uh, uh, detailed about uh, uh, there are different types of bands and even that the Fermi energy level where uh, that Fermi energy Fermi energy level is that energy level where we can get that uh, uh, electrons yeah one can say there is the probability of existence uh, existence of electrons up to that energy levels and also the position of uh, that Fermi energy level at a different type of semiconducting materials we have discussed in that lecture so for pure or intrinsic type semiconductor that Fermi energy level is in between that conduction and valence band at the center of the conduction and valence band whereas in the case of n type semiconductor that Fermi energy level is shifted towards that conduction band and in p type p type semiconductors that Fermi energy level is uh, shifted towards valence band so here this is the combination of p type and n type semiconductor so this is p type part and this is n type part so one can say this is the band diagram of pn junction material so in this p type part this fermi energy level is inside this uh, valence band and in the n type part this fermi energy level is inside that uh, uh, conduction band so and this is because he because of uh, uh, that doping rate in ordinary p type and n type semiconductor this uh, fermi energy level is near of this uh, valence band and near of this conduction band but uh, when we increase the doping rate the fermi energy level shifted to, uh, shifted inside that uh, uh, conduction and uh, valence band so in p type semiconducting materials this fermi energy level is inside this valence band and that n type semiconducting material this uh, fermi energy level is inside the conduction band and this is the gap this gap is that forbidden energy gap which is uh, measured by uh, denoted by ez and uh, uh, Obviously, at the, um, in p-type semiconductor, the excess uh, charge carriers are holes and in n-type semiconductor, the excess charge carriers are electrons and so the electrons will be positioned here and holes will be positioned in between this, this region here. So, these are the electrons and these are the holes and uh, when forward biasing is used, forward biasing is used means when this p-type is connected with the uh, uh, positive port of battery and n type semiconductor is connected with negative pole of that battery then this electrons and these holes repel move towards this uh, junction the junction of this p type p type and n type so here there is some probability of a combination of electrons and holes and uh, spontaneously some uh, light is emitted and uh, uh, this is uh, um, usually um, like that light emitting diode but when doping rate is much high and further that um, one third sole condition is pulpit then uh, this type of uh, situation occurs so and uh, these are that uh, these are numbers of electrons are much more and numbers of holes are much more so after transition from this uh, uh, electrons from higher energy level to this uh, lower energy level the and after recombination of, the, of these electrons with holes this uh, photons the energy equal to the gap of um, gap between these uh, uh, energy levels uh, is emitted and numbers of electrons are much more and uh, uh, its number also increased number also increases uh, because of that fabry resonator and after uh, fulfilling that particular third sole condition that laser uh, come out from uh, that particular system uh, in between that junction of p and n type semiconductor so mechanism is simple not uh, very difficult uh, you shouldn't have to remember this uh, 
in p type semiconductors electron uh, holes are free and n type semiconductors and holes are uh, electrons are free and uh, numbers are abundant because of uh, it's a high doping rate uh, since this is heavily doped uh, uh, system so we have numbers of um, many numbers of holes are here and many numbers of electrons are when forward biasing are applied holes shifted towards this uh, um, barrier and electrons shifted towards this barrier and there is some probability of recombination of electrons and holes but, but the numbers are so high that after transition from this higher energy level to uh, this lower uh, energy level that electron uh, gives that photons and numbers of photons are much more which finally converts in form of laser so for advantages it implies pass, uh, passive cooling techniques in its design it's very efficient because uh, uh, just by using a simple 1.1 volt battery one can get laser it consumes less power it offers excellent efficiency with very high operating operation duration it is very easy in operation just uh, uh, switch on and uh, get laser semiconductor lasers are cheap and in economical to afford it offers a long life highly monochromatic tunable and continuous beam it is simple in design construction and compact in size mirrors are not required unlike other laser types so just uh, use a simple polish and uh, one can get uh, uh, that fabric paper paper generator type system disadvantages this laser is not suitable for many application due to its low power production so its a power is not much high as that india type laser or uh, uh, so for low because of this low power production many where it cannot be used the temperature affects its output actually that conductivity of uh, that uh, uh, semiconductors is controlled by temp can be controlled by temperature also that's why uh, this is one of the disadvantages of uh, that semiconducting laser the output beam profile has unusual shape due to lasing medium two shard size size is very small and a rectangular shape in general this is rectangular shape beam diverge is much greater compared to other laser type so there is no collimator type system is here and uh, that laser come out from the gap between that uh, rectangular shaped p and n type material so beam divergence uh, is uh, possible and it's greater compared to others its cooling requirement is considered to be its a drawback in some uh, cases these are some uh, difference between ordinary led light emitting diode and uh, no sorry its uh, applications uh, depending on its a uh, feature so many applications of semiconductor laser because of these different functions and features uh, semiconductor lasers are widely used uh, in reading of optical disc recording on optical disc laser printers fps optical communication in pcs mobile phones and mores laser microscopes painting markers line lasers measure distance of roads and between cars building height for civil engineer purpose sensing application including smoke alarm dust management and laser mines also summary in this lectures the construction working principle of semiconductor laser was discussed in detail some limitations also as well as that applications were discussed in uh, at the last thank you all and uh, enjoy learning